What's up everybody and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Hope everyone is spot on. Uh, thank you for dropping by. Now, uh, before we get into, into the, the title of this video, I need to make it extremely clear that uh, I'm not a doctor. Uh, I'm probably not even an expert in this field. Uh, I'm more just speaking from experience and some of the things that I did wrong or, or should have done when I was when I was coming up in the, in the, in the industry. And this is not meant to encourage the use uh, or, or anything to do with the use of steroids. In fact, it's probably to do, it's just to discourage. Uh, I'm, I, I understand that people are gonna do this regardless, um, so I'm just gonna do my due diligence to try and help that in the best way that they should be doing. So before you get into like, what should you be doing for your first cycle, uh, you should be asking yourself a lot of questions first and you should be assessing a lot of things before that you even do that first injection or, or that first whatever you're gonna do. This thing's gonna be, have you got like a very good understanding of bodybuilding? Do you have what it takes to be a bodybuilder? Do you, can you put in the time? Can you diet hard? Can you train hard? Can you sleep well? Can you do all the ingredients extremely well? I think that would be a, a prerequisite to anyone before, you know, taking that route of, of using anabolic androgenic steroids. I don't think that if you don't have an understanding of those things that you should be anywhere near it because you're just gonna do yourself more harm than good. Uh, and I think that you should, I personally, I feel like you should be doing it, you know, if it's going to compete or put food on your plate or take you to a level that can only, you can only get that way, then, and, and that's what you really, really want and you're okay with all the things that are going to be there, then I understand. I think you need to do your due diligence of what you're getting into. Do you understand that you're increasing your heart, you know, your heart disease risk, you're increasing your, you know, potential kidney risk, your potential liver risk, you're, you're playing with things like your cholesterol risk. Uh, which can affect heart disease as well. Uh, if you use things like growth hormone and insulin, you can maybe get insulin resistance. There are things like, what, what about, can you afford it? Can you afford all of the things that come along with it? The blood tests, the, uh, you know, buying the right drugs, buying the needles. Do you know where to get the needles from? Do you know how to administer it? Can you even get real gear in the first place? There are so many things that you should be asking yourself before, rather than going, this guy in the gym said that I should take it. I'm just going to do it because it's not just like a one-time thing. It should be consistent and you've got to understand how to administer it. And what happens if it goes wrong? What, what do you do if it goes wrong? What happens if you put something in and, and now suddenly, suddenly you're developing gynecomastia? Maybe you've got high blood pressure. Maybe you've got huge water retention. What should you do next? I think it's even you to do, do, do the due diligence to understand what to do next or employ someone who does, for example, a coach. Uh, and that's what I did when I first started, because I didn't know enough. I thought I did, but realistically speaking, I needed to outsource that information. So once you understand oh, the plethora of risks um, associated, and you have weighed those risks up against your perceived goals, um, and what you think you can get out of it, and, and you're okay with that balance, or that ratio, whatever it's going to be, then okay, then there are some more things to move forward to. Uh, so you want to get a base, baseline blood work done. You want to understand where you fall naturally. With nothing ever assisting you hormonally, where do you fit? Like that's pretty much where you should try and aim for. If you were to cruise, if you were to do TRT, if you were to, you know, maybe come off, you'd want to try to see your levels get back up to that level, uh, that, you know, same testosterone, same cholesterol, same sort of range, as that's probably where you naturally fit. But also just to see if you've got any anything wrong in the first place, like do you have poor cholesterol? Are you overweight? You know, is your testosterone really, really low? Or is it actually really, really fine and you're super young? Like, you've got to understand those things as well. But it gives you a good baseline where to go off. Then you need to know where to get it. Can you get it from somewhere that's going to be legit? If it's not going to be legit, do you want to take that risk? That's another one to the risk pile. Um, are you able to get it consistently? What happens if this guy goes, goes bust? It's still illegal to sell in many, many countries, you know? So it's not illegal to take in some, obviously. Um, what are you going to do if it goes out of stock? Where are you going to go from there? You know, so you've got to understand those things as well. Do you know how to actually inject the substance? Do you know if you can mix mix oils? Can you use uh, testosterone and Primo in the same vial? Can you, you know, mix oils and waters? Can you put growth hormone and oils in the same vial? Do you, do you know the answers to those questions? I think those are some of the questions that you should be answering yourself, answering before you even use that first, that first, you know, whatever it's going to use. Once you've understood <laughs> all of those potential impacts, along with what you should be doing just as a prerequisite before, uh, then, you can, you know, you can look into some things that are, are going to enhance you. Uh, and I would say personally for your first, maybe even second, you know, you cycle, you can get away with just testosterone. Really, really just, that's all you're gonna need. Naturally speaking, people are producing anywhere from 60, 60 milligrams to maybe 125 milligrams per week. You know, obviously higher on the end if you, if you have higher natural testosterone. 
So you know, even going to like 200, you're going to see a significant increase. People are going to say, why would you shut yourself down for, you know, not a, not a massive increase? Well, because you want to get the most at the least, and trust me, you can grow extremely well off that. Um, not only that, but you can avoid the use of aromatized inhibitors, which we know are, are very, they're neurotoxic, they're poor for blood glucose, and it's something that I advise all my clients and have avoided at a lot of cost. Like, I would always avoid using an AI where I can. I've used, like I've said this many times, I've used two tablets in the past 18 months, and that was pre-comp to just, just to, to pull estrogen down very, very slightly. So where you can design design your, design your cycle around not having to use an aromatized inhibitor. So... You know, starting low on testosterone so you don't aromatize loads. You can assess your aromatized tolerance. So, like, maybe you're someone who is highly, you know, you, you highly aromatize. Maybe you're someone who doesn't aromatize. I've had clients who can't tolerate more than 250. You know, I've had clients who can go up to 400 and I'd be absolutely fine. Also find that people can be different in their first cycle to their tenth cycle. They can be, you know, maybe more used to it. So you can run things a little bit higher. In order for you to find your tolerance, you have to like start low. You don't try you don't try find a tolerance for something by jumping in at the deep end, you know? Like I would start super low, maybe two hundred and I would just titrate up, maybe in fifty milligram bumps, um, to establish where you're, you know, every two to three weeks so we can allow that bump to take place in terms of aromatized to and then establish where potentially where is the line between uh, the effects of what's happening and then aromatization becomes too much like if aromatization becomes too much you need to address your blood pressure too much you need to um, f you know maybe you've got some nipple sensitivity or you've got some gynecomastia developing uh, if it's in those pre-early stages that you can reverse it pretty quickly by you know assessing the the, the, the estrogenic related side effects quickly with, an, with, with a potential AI um, but you would much rather just find that tolerance and come just below it and that's you like that's you pretty much done there You don't need to worry about anything else um, Some people would be 250 some people would be 300 some people would be 350 on their first one But I, I probably wouldn't be looking at going much higher than that um, But just take you know, but just titrating up to, to assess that tolerance with aromatizing um, with the aromatizing compound and also just the obsession tolerance of everything it's all completely new you can't just fucking jump in the deep end it doesn't make any sense um, i'd recommend just potentially having uh, ai on hand for example tamoxifen for example aromacin because if you do get to the point when maybe you just misjudged it and you've gone a little bit too high too quickly and you need to nip it in the bud very very quickly like there and then rather than take down the injections and wait a couple of weeks for it to come down and have the problem persist for two weeks before it comes down you could potentially implement something there. So I would have it on hand for issues like that, but very rarely if you do it, if you titrate it properly, you do it slowly, incrementally, you, you shouldn't really be faced with that problem. So so yeah, that's my take on on like what a first cycle should be. So like it's it's nothing complicated. Like I, I, what I've always done, and I've pretty much always been an advocate of, of do using as least as possible as you want to get the desirable effect. And I appreciate people have different desirable effects. People have different goals, lots of different pressures on, on what they want to do. So, so hopefully we can change that narrative that the 500, 600 milligram cycles, they don't need to be your first ones. Uh, they, they, that's very much throwing you in the deep end. Uh, use the least that you can to get the desirable effect. So uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, guys. If you enjoy this type of content, drop a comment and uh, we'll speak to you guys. Peace.